to remind you all of our uh, Christmas Eve service. That'll be on December 24th. <laughs> and it's going to be at 6 o'clock. We uh, ask you all to pray about someone you might want to invite. And, uh, you know, if every one of you invites someone and brings someone, our church will double in one night. And like I said last week, if you can only bring half of a person, if another person brings another half, that still counts. So whatever you got to do, really pray about someone that you, you feel might be blessed by. That. Someone who might be tender. And, and, a, and a Christmas service doesn't seem as threatening to visitors. So pray about someone who might benefit from that. Uh, we're looking forward to a good evening of music and testimony and scriptures. So you pray about that. Helen, is there anything you need to say about the treat bags that you guys are going to make? Do you need a donation for that or anything? Yeah, we're going to have three Sunday. Sunday. And you can't eat them. Ever? <laughs> and I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. That's a hard if rule. I'll try my best. If you're a little kid, you can eat it. Okay. <laughs> As you see. I heard a true story the other day. I, I, I've heard it's true. I don't know if this is real. I was, I was given on good authority it's a true story. Uh, very recently, uh, a, a taxi driver died, and he was taken by the angels to the presence of God up in heaven. And the very same day, a preacher died, and he was taken by the angels up into heaven. And I guess, before you just go into heaven, I guess you have to stand in front of St. Peter. I don't know how that story got started, but I was told it was a true story, so we'll see. So, the cab driver's there, and St. Peter says, what's your name? Uh, Lenny, I'm from the Bronx, you know, I'm the cab driver. He goes, oh, Lenny, welcome. You see that mansion down there, that real big shiny one? That's yours. Welcome to heaven, just go down there and enjoy that. So Lenny goes, yeah! So he runs, he's kicking his heels, and he goes down to his mansion, and the preacher standing there says, this ought to be good. So uh, St. Peter says, in your name, uh, Reverend Jones. Ah, Reverend Jones, welcome to heaven. You see that shack down there with the roof falling in and the porch needing paint? That's yours. Enjoy eternity. Have a, have a great eternity. And Pastor Jones stood there and went, what is this? That taxi driver? You got the really nice place and I get this shack? Well, what's this about? And St. Peter says, well, Sunday after Sunday, you stood there in a pulpit and you put people to sleep. For 30 years. That guy, he drove like mad around New York City for 30 years, and they were in the back seat praying. <laughs> I heard it's a true story. <laughs> so if i got to keep you guys awake, I'm going to start throwing stuff. <laughs> None of you. If you <laughs> wear your safety helmets and glasses. If you return... To the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. I would really like to talk about angels this morning. We're going we're to read about the same angel. Appears to two different people in this first chapter. And two different responses. Pretty much the same message, but two different responses. The first guy I'd like to introduce you to, in Luke chapter 1, verse 11, is Zechariah. Now just a little background, Zachariah, Zachari, not Zachariah, that's his brother, <laughs> Zachariah, uh, he had, it had fallen upon him that he would burn the incense, that he would uh, worship, lead the worship at the altar of incense in the temple of the Lord. And people were outside praying. Now Zechariah was, was getting up there in age and his wife Elizabeth had never had a child. And in those days, you know, if you didn't have a child, it was kind of unspoken, but people kind of looked at you and said, you must have done something wrong. You must be in sin, or God's curse is on you. It wasn't often spoken, but it was always implied. So poor Elizabeth maintained her faith and maintained her trust in the Lord. And even though she was old and not blessed with a child, she had to hold up her head high and walk in dignity. Sometimes the Lord makes you wait a while. and We don't always like it, but it's worth it. Anyway, her, her husband... Zechariah is in the temple doing God's business. And, and we'll pick it up from there. Verse 11 says, When Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. 
Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel says, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. And he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for, coming to the, for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the God. But Zechariah said, Okay, are you going to listen to this? Zechariah said to the angel, whoa, 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 whoa. How can I be sure this will happen? Because I'm an old man. My wife is also well along in years. Right? Verse 19. Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. I, I'm sorry, it was he who sent me to bring you this good news. But now, since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. And of course, if you read on, you'll realize it happened exactly that way. I want to talk to you about another angelic visitation to a different person. Basically the same message, a little different, but let's, let's uh, go to verse 26. Now, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean by this. And then what the angel does, verse 30, Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus. He will be very great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, But how can this be, or how can this happen, since I am a virgin? Uh, the angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the baby to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. With man it is impossible, but with God, nothing is impossible. Isn't that what we hear? So, I, I would like to talk to you about angels. If, if you would, wouldn't mind. Um, now, some people don't believe in angels, and I feel sorry for you, because you can't really read the Bible very far, Old or New Testament, without hearing about an angel. Uh, we hear about angels in the Garden of Eden, keeping guard with a flaming sword. So, you guys are too sinful, you can't go in there anymore. We hear about uh, a guy named uh, Elisha. He was in his tent, just waking up, and his servant was in the tent going, Boss, we're in trouble. All these, all these soldiers are coming up, and we're toast, man. They're going to hang us, and they're going to flay us alive. We're, we're done for. And, you know, Elisha, the prophet, is just waking up. And he says, oh, Lord, open his eyes. Let him see that there are more with us than there are with them. Elisha had that confidence with God. So the servant sticks his head out the tent, and he sees all these flaming chariots and mighty warriors and soldiers, this angelic army standing, protecting them. Now, that was a heavenly vision, right? So, you can jump ahead, or jump around. I'm sorry, I might be going out of order. But Daniel, praying to God, you're going to the lion's den. I didn't do nothing wrong. 
I know, but that's the law of the land. You're going to the lion's den. King Darius was really upset that he made that law. And Daniel goes in the lion's den. And, you know, if you've ever seen a, anybody ever seen a lion? They got huge heads, huge <clears throat> teeth. They're, they're, they're just vicious, right? And when they growl, it's like it shakes the paint off the walls. Well, he's in, in a den full of these lions. But an angel shows up and says, Don't. Don't you bite, Daniel. You leave him alone. And if you lions behave yourself, I'll give you a bunch of false prophets tomorrow morning for breakfast. <laughs> so the lions went, All right. But the angel was sent by God that protected him miraculously. And he was saved that night. Uh, if you want to jump ahead, Peter was in jail. He was asleep, so he must not have been all that worried. He was going to probably be, you know, stabbed or, or, or stoned to death the next morning, but he was, he must have had confidence because he was asleep. And an angel shows up. He goes, and the chains fall off. He goes, come on, get your shoes and your coat on. We're leaving. And Peter, you know, he hadn't had his coffee yet. He's like staring around. He put his glasses on. He got his shoes on. Hey, I thought they're with you, you know. And the angel's going, come on, let's go. And he leads him out and the locks fall off and the doors open. He gets him out in the street and he turns him loose. So an angel was sent to deliver him from jail. A jailbreak led by an angel. That's pretty awesome. And um, if you want to read on further in the book of Acts, I think it's Acts 19. I'm, I'm sorry, I should have wrote that down. But uh, you, you, it's easy to find. Paul was on a ship. He was going to Rome, taken there as a prisoner. And he says, guys, uh, you really should like hold off until this storm passes and not set sail. And they're like, who are you, man? You're just a dumb prisoner. You're, you're probably going to go to Rome and have your head cut off. We're not listening to you. Well, it wasn't the next night that they were all in, in a bad storm. Paul steps up again. He goes, an angel sent by God stood by me this night and told me there will be no loss of life. But the ship will be lost. And now everybody's listening to, it, listening to him and hanging on his every word. The guy the night before was the lowest of the low. Now he's the guy they want to hear. And they followed the angel's instructions and they all made it to shore. But the ship was lost. So angels, they have, they have jobs. They're protectors. They're messengers. They're worshipers as well. If you read in the book of, a, um, well, mainly in the book of Revelation, you'll hear John saw a vision in heaven in the throne room. There were angels that had different wings. Some covered, some they flew with, some covered their eyes. And they worshipped God. They continuously said, holy, holy, holy. We had worshippers. We had worshippers, workers, and warriors. There's angels that carried swords. Oh, no, you don't. And, oh, no, you lions. Don't you dare bite. Oh, you know, and no, oh, those soldiers, you're not going to take my prophet. Angels do what they're supposed to do. And you have the angels who stand in the presence of God, like Gabriel, we hear about. What is your bidding, my Lord? Go and tell this person this. Go and tell that person that. You know, and uh, if, if you read it in Hebrews 10, the, the writer of Hebrews says, you know what? You guys ought to be kind to strangers. Because many of you, you may have entertained angels unaware. So there apparently are angels among <coughs> us. We can't recognize them. They look sort of like us, but they're sent by God, I think, uh, there's not a whole lot of ironclad on this, but I think to protect us. Sometimes they stop that car from hitting you in the parking lot, or sometimes they tell that deer, no, you stay over there, not often enough, <laughs> but they do it sometimes. So <coughs> angels are at work. Angels come from heaven. They're allowed to uh, walk among us and, and act among us from time to time. It's not typical. This isn't meant to be their environment, but God allows them in our midst. And we're also told in Hebrews that angels minister to the heirs of salvation. They are God's servants to us. And, and that's a pretty cool thing. But where we blow it is this, I think. Uh, some people just like have angel religions. Have you ever seen that online or seen like these weird angelic stores? that sell little statues. You name your own angel and you pray to it. You ask it questions and it answers you. I don't know if they're a Ouija board or what. I don't know how it works. I don't go there. But uh, angels of God would go, oh, no, that's not, no, that's not how we are. 
We listen to God. He tells us what to do. We go do it. Right? Because it pleases us to please Him. And angels are actually kind of fired up about us. They're excited to see what we're doing and what's going on with us. And we read last week about those angels who just couldn't take it anymore. They, they, who can we talk to? Oh, shepherds. Wow! Hello! Joy to the world. The Lord has come and, and you'll find Him in a manger and this is going to be great. You know, so angels are interested in our welfare, but only as far as what God has instructed them to do. So, of course, you guys know this, but there may be some people watching this or think, you know, there's, there's all these weird ideas and teachings about angels. Angels are only the servants. They're glorious, and every time they show up, people get, ah, scared. And usually the first thing an angel has to do is say, fear not, <laughs> calm down. Or, or an angel would touch someone and strength would return to them, like in Daniel's case and in John's case. Uh, so their business is glory, glorifying God. They don't answer prayers. They do not receive worship. They're God's servants and messengers, and they're very cool. All right? Is that pretty much plain to you guys? I totally believe they exist. I don't know. Maybe I've met one. You know, once or twice I was somewhere, and this guy walked in, you know, and I thought, I wonder if that's one of them. You know, I, I don't know. You know, I wonder if God just sent someone here watching after me. You ever heard this uh, idea about guardian angels? Anybody? Um, you know, I don't know if it's specifically like there's, uh, it's, a, it's a popular teaching in many religions that God sent uh, a guardian angel for every individual. And that, that sounds reasonable, but I don't know if that, that's, that's exactly like that. We know that they watch over us, and I don't know if it's that they're playing zone <laughs> or they're man to man. I don't know. Did you like that? How I feel like Just see if you're awake. But, uh, you know, I, I know that if God says, hey, go save her. Hey, watch out. She's about ready to fall out of the steps. You put a, put a thing of laundry in front of her. Make sure she doesn't get too hurt. <laughs> Tell her I said. <laughs> I guess our friend Lori took a tumble. God bless her. God heal her. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray that Ron does the laundry for the next week. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See how that works out. Let me know if that prayer gets in. Anyway. Luke. We're back to Luke, and we're meeting Zechariah. He's obviously praying to the Lord, and has been for quite some time. And he's a lot like us. Lord, my poor wife, she hasn't had a son. She hasn't had a child at all. Please, Lord, bless my wife, and bless me, and give us a child. He prayed that for so long and so often, that we get the same way. It's just like it becomes an automatic prayer, and we're really not thinking about it anymore. And, and, and when it actually does come to pass, we're surprised. Instead of saying, thank you, God, we're like, really? <laughs> now? So, uh, you know, Gabriel comes to Zechariah and says, hey, buddy, I got some good news for you. You're finally going to have a son. Your wife, Elizabeth, she's not just going to have a son, man. He's going to be great. He's going to be the forerunner to the Messiah. He's going to turn people, their hearts back to the fathers and the, and the, and the children. And, and, and he's going to glorify God. And it's going to be so great. Then there's crickets. And Zachary says, well, you know, let me straighten you out here, Gabriel. I'm old. She's old. I don't know if this is going to happen. Right? Is, is, is that what she was just, would have said? Let me straighten you out, Mr. Angel. Maybe you don't know... I'm getting back to fifth grade biology, okay? I'm well past my age. And, and Elizabeth, she's well past her age. This just can't happen, right? So there's Gabriel standing there shaking his head. Man, do I have to get a club and hit you over the head? <laughs> well, let, me, let this be a sign to you, Mr. Schmarty Pants, Mr. Know-it-all. You, my friend, are not going to be able to speak until this child is born. Starting now. You know, I wish that would happen more in my life, that I'd be struck and dumb so I wouldn't be able to put my foot in my mouth by saying something. But here's a sign to you, right? So that's one of the beautiful things that God does. He'll give you a vision, He'll give you a plan, He'll give you wisdom, and then He'll, he'll give you like a little confirmation. And, and on this night, this will happen. Like shepherds, yeah, the, the king is coming. This will be a sign to you. You will find him in, in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. Well, this will be a sign to you. You're not going to be able to talk, dummy, because you're Mr. Dowdy Pants, and God's will will be done. Right? So, he can't speak, and everything happens just the way the Lord has said. Now, I know some people got some theological problems already. Wait a minute. God 
does not operate unless there is faith. So God's up there in heaven biting his nails waiting for some man or woman to have faith before he can move. I don't think so. I think this is a good example right here. Right? I mean, yeah, he prayed. But he prayed for so long that, you know, he didn't even realize, you know, that his prayer is being answered right now. He didn't see it that way. The prayer just became like a cold thing. I just, I say the words because it's my pattern to do it. Did you guys ever do that? You're praying for somebody to get saved. You're praying for some a job. Or you're praying for whatever. And when it finally happens, you're like scratching your head about it. Instead of dropping your knees and saying, thank you, God. That's what he did. He's like, wait, whoa, 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 Mr. Gabriel, I, this, this can't happen. So we don't, no, sorry, we, we don't need your faith. God's plan, his will will be done, so you can just play Mr. Shut Up for a few months until it happens. So there's example number one, right? Example number two, a young girl. Hail Mary, full of grace, blessed art thou among women, blessed is, is your fruit, the fruit of your womb, Jesus. You've heard people say that over and over and over while they're you know, rubbing the prayer beads. I mean, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but we have a young girl here who is not the answer to your prayer, who is not the answerer of your prayer. People think like, hey, hey Mary, we know Jesus is busy. Can you put in a good word for me? Can you talk to him for me? Oh yeah, no problem. What's your prayer? I'll take, I'll take this down for you. Hey Jesus, while you were out, or while you were sleeping or taking a nap, uh, Phyllis and Gladys, they said this, so here you go. It don't work that way. Mary doesn't answer your prayer. The Bible tells us there's one mediator between God and man, and that is Jesus Christ. And Jesus came, lived the perfect life, lived and died and resurrected, and says, In my name! You may go directly to the Father, and He will hear your prayer. So we don't need to pray to any of the saints. We don't need to pray to Mary. Sorry if you differ with me theologically, but I'll just refer to these 66 books we call the canon of Scripture, and that's where I'm going to stand on this. I love you as a person, but I disagree with you and, and your, your theology. I do not think your theology is biblically based. So if that makes you mad, you know, stick around. I'll make you madder. Mm -hmm. I got more. So he goes to Mary. Greetings, Mary. The old English says, Hail Mary. But, you know, in, in essence, he was saying, Mary, how you doing? It's good to see you. You are going to be blessed. God's grace is going to be upon you. Something amazing is about to happen to you. That's just like the Tom Millis paraphrase of what is about to be said here. And you're probably not liking that. Oh, Tom's paraphrasing the Bible. That's not too bad, did it. <laughs> Already done it. You couldn't stop me. So Mary, confused, disturbed, bewildered. First of all, I'm just going about my business, and there's this big, shiny, glorious person. I mean, you think about this. Someone who's standing in the presence of God. You know, some of the sparkly, some of the glory is bound to be like absorbed in his, his countenance and his face and in his clothing. So when, when someone from the heavenly realm comes to our earthly realm... It's terrifying. So usually when an angel appears to someone, they lose their strength, they fall on their face, they have a conniption. The Bible doesn't say anything whether they mess their shorts or nothing. I don't know. Probably. That'd be my story. That's why I'm not in the Bible. But, uh, you know, this, it's, it's a terrifying, awesome thing. And, and usually every time you read about an angel appearing to someone, one of the first things they say is, peace be unto you, or fear not. Or sometimes the angel has to literally touch someone and, and restore their strength. Now we can talk. Right? Okay, so Mary's, okay. Her heart is beating a million miles an hour. And he says, peace be unto you. And he gives her this message. Mary, you are going to have a son. And he's going to be called the Son of the Most High. And he will rule over Israel. And there will be no end to his kingdom. If you're a Jewish girl, you know what this means. This is the Messiah. All Jewish tradition and all Jewish scripture taught every good Jewish boy and girl that God is going to bring up a king just like David, only better, from the line of David. And when he sits on the throne, it's never going to end. It's going to be forever. 
Our kingdom will be established. And won't that be a great day? We won't have any more Greeks or Persians or Romans or Babylonians kicking us around anymore. We'll be a people in our land and God will be our king through his Messiah. Every good Jewish boy and girl knew that. And this is exactly what Mary is being told by this angel. You're going to have a son, child, and he's going to be the Messiah. Plain and simple. The son of God. And Mary asks a legitimate question. How can this be? Since I've never been with a man. I mean, we're told that she is engaged to a man. Uh, just a, a, as an aside. In the Jewish tradition, when someone was betrothed, it, it, it went in three sections. The first one was the promise, or the engagement. The second one was the actual ceremony when you stood before the rabbi, and you joined hands, and you jumped the broom, or whatever you did, you put the, the, the cloth over the glass, and you smashed it, and you say mazel tov, and, you know, the Jewish way. That was number two. And the third one was when a man and woman did that thing that men and women do in marriage, you don't even spell that, do you? It's the thing, the deed, okay? <laughs> Knowing them, that's a nice way of saying it. So please, don't stop blushing. Stop, none of you would be here if that didn't happen, so. Don't throw any stones at me. I did, but you didn't know I was going to talk dirty to you today. <laughs> but, uh, so those three things, the engagement, the ceremony, and then the, we'll just, that's the French say, we'll call it, ho, ho, ho. okay? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I always got confused reading about Mary and Joseph going to Bethlehem, and Joseph was referred to as Mary's betrothed or engaged to, and we're also told that he knew her not until she had given birth to her firstborn son, Jesus. And we're also told that they had, Mary and Joseph had other children after that. But as of the time going to Jerusalem, when she was great with child, they had not experienced the three things in the typical Hebrew marriage. He had not known her in the biblical sense. He had been promised to her, and he had gone through the ceremony with her. So they had jumped the broom and, and did the mazel tov thing in the ceremony. But uh, <clears throat> that is why, in case you were always wondering, why when they were going to Beth Bethlehem was Joseph only called her fiancé. Because all three of those things had not happened. They eventually did. So in this day and age, we like to get this all out of order. <laughs> you know, we put number three usually first. And then maybe there's a ceremony or maybe there's a proposal and we just get it all out of whack. I mean, but God forgives us. God, can, God can, can work through people and help people. But in the Jewish sense, this is how it happened. But here we find Mary saying, Whoa, uh, Gabriel, I don't want to like, correct you or make trouble, but I, I'm engaged. Yeah, that's number one. But I've never known the man. We've never had the ceremony yet. You know, we're just, I'm just promised. And, and uh, Gabriel explains to her. He doesn't get mad at her. He says, The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. And you will be, become pregnant with this child. And this will be of God. The holy seed of God. Just like it said in the book of Genesis. The seed of a woman. Women don't have seed. They have eggs. Not this time. Because this is holy. This is separate. This is other. This is miraculous. What kinds of fancy words. They, they, um, immaculate. All, all these things they add to it. But it is a... Miracle only happened one time in human history, and it's only ever going to happen that one time. This is not a typical thing. Call it a miracle. Now, a miracle is when God suspends something natural, and he does it for his glory. Now, one of the ones that occurred to me this morning about miracles, when Jesus was standing in the book of Acts, talking to his disciples, and all of a sudden he started to fly. He just went up. And he kept ascending until he was out of their sight. Right? Before Superman, before Shazam, before any, the Green Lantern, before anybody, any superhero could ever fly, Jesus flew. That is pretty awesome. But the law of gravity has to be miraculously suspended for a man to fly. And Jesus did. That's a miracle. And when, whenever God does suspend a natural law, is going to hell and she's got her eyes closed. Oh, they're open. Okay. I told you, I'm going to throw something. I'm resting my eye. Yeah, that's how it always starts. <laughs> anyway, you have to suspend the law of gravity in order to fly. And it was for the glory of God. 
for a woman, a virgin, to conceive. This is a miracle. It doesn't happen every day. The natural laws were suspended for God's glory in order that the Son of Man could be brought forth. So what's Mary say? I'm the Lord's servant. I'm the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be unto me even as you have said. So now Gabriel's saying, now we're talking here. Now there's a girl who trusts God. This is amazing. This is awesome. This is why we should talk about Mary and sing songs about Mary. She was a great gal, but she's not to be worshipped or prayed to. That's, that's where we draw the line. But she it was an amazing young girl. I don't, she was a perfect young girl. She sings a song to God, my Savior. So if Mary needed a Savior, that meant she wasn't perfect. You know, she was a good person, but she was not perfect. So Gabriel was very pleased. So he says, this shall be a sign unto you. And this is very cool because having confirmations along your way is a blessing. This will be your confirmation. You go and you travel down to Jerusalem and you meet your cousin Elizabeth. That old woman, she is six months pregnant. And when you see that, you will know that everything I've said to you is totally true. Look, when Mary and Joseph were in the manger and these shepherds come, we just heard the angels say that there was a baby here wrapped in, in swaddling clothes. And here you are. That confirms everything we were told. And then there's Mary and Joseph. What are we doing here? What's going on? Why don't we have a hotel room? And then here comes the shepherds confirming that they were on the right track. Do you see this pattern how God works in our lives? Has he promised you anything? Has he made a promise to you? Are you hanging on to a scripture and believing in it? God is going to send you a confirmation. God is going to send you little tidbits of, of joy and happiness before the actual prayer is answered. Okay? He often works like that. And it, it's beautiful that he does that. It's like kind of like giving your kids little hints before Christmas Day. You don't like Christmas Day, do you? Because the anticipation, wait, what's in that box over there? <laughs> I, I used to torture my kids when they were little. There's something in this box for you. <laughs> You're going to open up Christmas Day, but see, it's all wrapped up. See, oh, it has your name on it. <laughs> oh, we're just going to put it up here. And you can think about it all day long while you're in school and when you're walking past that closet. Don't you touch it. You know, that's torture. But that was me as a parent, so guilty. <laughs> Maybe you were better parents than me, but that's how I like to do it. So I feel bad for Eric's kids when they go, well, he's going to torture them. I don't know where you learned it. So Mary, you know, we're just, I'm jumping ahead of Scripture. You can read this more on your own. Goes down and she sees that her, her cousin Elizabeth is pregnant. This older woman, six months pregnant, and she's just so full of joy. It's true. I mean, Mary had a, a rough road to, to walk because a young girl unmarried yet, not, not gone through the ceremony yet, not doing the deed with her husband yet, you know, and she's pregnant. She's got, that's a tall order. She's got to live with that and, and live through that. And, and nobody's going to explain this, but I know it was from God. And now she has this confirmation, which was so sweet. It really came in handy, I bet. And Elizabeth hears Mary outside saying, greetings. And when she heard that greeting from Mary, the Bible tells us that the babe within her left for joy at, the, at her greeting. There's another confirmation for Elizabeth. Not only am I carrying a child that is of God, that young girl, she's carrying a child from God too. There's my confirmation. So Elizabeth comes out and says, the babe within me left at your greeting. I know all about you. You're going to have a baby too. And then Mary launches into her song, which we call the Magnificent, where my soul greatly magnifies the Lord. What a blessing. What a wonderful thing. What an answer to prayer. For these young ladies and old ladies to the, in their lives, but also for us. So, well, is God going to send an angel to you to help you in your world, in your, in your walk? Maybe he already has. Maybe that's been happening and you just didn't know it. Maybe you were unaware. You know, I don't think it's a good idea to say, Lord, let me see an angel. Lord, let me see an angel. I want to visually see an angel. Because, you know, Satan might say, well, let me take care of this. I'll show him an angel. 
you know, Satan can appear as an angel of light. And he's appeared as an angel of light a few different times in history, and he's led people on the wrong path. So I would recommend avoid praying to see an angel. Don't. Pray to God. Ask him about his will and his purpose. And if angels get involved, that will be God's doing, not yours. They are not yours to manipulate as you will. I think that's when we enter into trouble, guys. Does that make sense? So keep your prayers to God. Not Mary, not angels, and not saints. That's where I'm going to stand according to the scriptures. Now, have angels been involved with your life? You know, there's been times in my life where I can't quite put my foot on it. A good friend of mine had a little boy, and he was just a toddler. And uh, we, I was, it was Jeff Wiley. We played in a band together, and it was a Christian band. And we had a big drum riser built on this particular stage. And as soon as we were done playing, his little boy Jay would run for those drums. And he was just a little fella. And uh, he, he would run up on that platform. And, well, before we could get there, Jeff and I were standing about 10 feet away. He ran up there on that platform and he slipped. And he starts falling backwards. And Jeff and I, there was no way either one of us could get there fast enough to catch him or whatever. So we were kind of like in horror and shock. And we watched him, both of us stood there, we watched this little kid fall in slow motion and land very gently on the floor. And he was okay. He didn't even cry. He just got back up and tried to do it again. And I'll never forget this. Jeff and I looked at each other and he said to me, did you see that? Now was there an angel there that made the saving catch <laughs> and went over there and helped him and let him down? Probably, I don't know, but that's one of the closest things I've ever seen with these eyes. And Jeff was right, that we both saw it, we both looked at each other like, that shouldn't happen. <laughs> we both knew the law of gravity, how when something falls and how it goes down. So, you know, that was a real showing for me. And there's, there's one other thing that I can't really, really confirm, but I know I experienced this. Uh, when I was a little kid, because uh, I've, I've been to this tree. It was in the edge of my yard where I grew up many times. And I've always stood there and shook my head. Right underneath this tree, there was a big rock. In the old days when they had these big pasture fields, uh, you'd see where the pastures were, the, where the cows would go and graze. Well, there'd just be, out of nowhere, there'd be a big rock sticking out of the ground. For some reason, they just left it there. Well, there was this particular tree on the edge of my grandma's property. And I remember being a little kid. And I was climbing up this branch, and this branch was rotten. And any normal, sane person would know, hey, this is a rotten branch. Don't crawl on it. Well, I remember crawling up it very distinctly, and it broke. And I fell back. I don't know exactly how far, but I remember hitting the back of my head very clearly on, the, on the, one of those big rocks in the middle of the pasture. And I remember seeing stars. I hit it hard. But I stood up. I felt my head. It didn't even hurt. I remember looking at the rock. And I remember looking at where the branch used to be, and I remember looking down and seeing the branch laying on the ground. I just went, Bip. oh well, and I went about my business. You know, and the Lord brought that back to my remembrance years later. And I believe my heart was telling me, see, you could have been dead right there, but I wasn't done with you yet. You know, I mean, why does this person pass away young? Why does this person live to be this way? Why is this person delivered from this? Why is this person not delivered? You know, I can't, I'm not here to answer those. I'm not here to talk about the fairness of it. But sometimes, in God's grace, in God's provision, in God's plan, you've been spared something. And you couldn't even quite put your finger on it. Maybe multiple times. God sent an angel on your behalf. It's, that's meant to give you confidence. If you're still sitting here today, and you're still breathing, it means God still has a plan for you. God still has a purpose for you. Right? So, I hope this message inspires you. It was true then, it's true now. You have been given a Savior, you have Him, and you are going to live forever. But in the meantime, you've been spared a lot of stuff because of God's grace and mercy. And maybe by the hand of an angel, you never know. So you think about that when you're driving uh, home some night on a dark, rainy night, and those deer are just waiting to jump out in front of you. Say, oh Lord. 
I don't want to talk to angels, but I'm going to talk to you right now. Please, maybe send a couple to keep them dear on the side of the road so that I don't make them my hood ornament tonight. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good prayer. So let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your mercy, for your salvation, for your grace to us. Lord, we give you thanks for the many times you spared us. Maybe we should have, we should have been dead ten times over, but you have spared us to this day. So Lord, here we are, this day, in this season, in this country, in this time frame, Lord, we're here, and we have been spared. So Lord, what would you say to us? What would you have us do? What would you lead us to? What is our direction? What is your plan? Lord, we lay down our agenda and we say, Lord, what is your agenda for me? <coughs> I just pray that Lord, the Lord would speak to you individually and lead you into that for his glory. Now, some of you need to say you're sorry. Some of you need to say help. Some of you need to say, what's going on, Lord? But that is between you and God. And I just want to give you a short opportunity right now to ask those questions or to give your thanks. Just, just do that right now and uh, quietly in your hearts talk to God for a minute and then I will dismiss you.